Next thing I want to do, I want to check my rear axle. It's good to do every once in a while, and this is just for a video documentary, documentation, if you will. 2.5 millimeter. There are two different sizes of these bolts here. All right, next step, get your big old hex socket, 17 mil. Makes this a lot easier. Well, not just easy, but possible. Normally, if you're, what you normally would do once you remove those three bolts is you just torque this down. You want to check the torque on it pretty much every time you change the wheel or change a tire or a chain whatever uh, it's just a good idea to keep this thing cinched down i think it's 110 foot pounds double check that um, but it just keeps all your components of the bearing of the king bearing area or including the king bearing all the components squished together at the right torque because the last thing you want is play as you're running around but like i said we're gonna do we'll pull the axle out i want to see how things are looking so um yep here we go Again, make sure, see that slightly beveled washer there, all right, so just keep track of the stuff, all the components as you take them out because they are put together in a very particular order. All right, so now the next step is we're going to loosen the chain um, so we can get a little play. All right, so to loosen your chain, or to adjust your chain for that matter, uh, wheel off, you got these two 13 millimeter bolts, get you an extension, make sure you're loosening, be very careful not to damage this guide, this is, this is your speedometer, we'll see why this is all important here in a minute. All right, so I had to skip ahead a little bit because it was kicking my butt, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, as you can see, I've got the chain off, took off some of the uh, chain guards. Uh, I don't know what it is about rotating this eccentric cam within the axle, but it's really fighting me. But anyway, after a lot of sweating and swearing, I finally was able to get the chain off and to get access. So the next step is you pull off your uh, bearing assembly here and here it comes all right so you can see there's a lot of components to it you just have to be very careful to keep things in order notice there is a little little rubber gasket right here where it goes it's on the this guy here like so all right this is if you do want to put you can pull this apart if you really want to get into it and clean it which I did last time I'm not gonna do it again this time but and then there's this piece here you just want to look for wear on the inner side here there should not be any uh, if you've got everything properly torqued uh, and then again, behind here are some more bearings um, and some washers. So we'll just keep this all assembled and out of the way. Okay. All right, so again, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. I took the, uh, you have to unbolt your rotor from the axle. All right, so you can get lined up right about there, right about here, and you can get a socket in through it, through the side. Uh, this guy right here you get basically like that right okay um, I did remove the brake pads you may not have to do that but just be safe because you need to play and now we will remove the axle give a little little lift tap sometimes you need to pop it with a sock or a rubber mallet 
Hopefully you shouldn't need anything harder than that. If you do, you might have more problems down the road. So you see that rubber gasket again, that goes on the axle end here. Right about there. But yeah, that is what you call unobtainium, an axle in decent shape for an Aprilia Futura, right? Now what this exposes is the one part of this bike that is making it very difficult to keep, and that is this, the king bearing inside of here. Um, you may have noticed I did unbolt the speed sensor. So it goes in here. Basically, as the axle spins, the bearings go, there's a, this sensor senses the rotation of the bearing and that's how it knows your speed, right? So we'll just get it out of the way. But it's these bearings that are kind of a pain to, to find. Well, not a pain, they're impossible to find, to find new ones. Um, if you're lucky, you can find a used king bearing uh, that's in decent shape. There's not many out there. This may have been the last one that I purchased. I don't know off eBay off a of bike being parted uh, Definitely cannot get them new anymore um, But yeah, that's what it looks like All right Here's the other end and you can see Needle bearings in here. Everything looks pretty good. I cleaned it real good last time lubed it up with uh, plenty of waterproof grease so I will do the same and reassemble. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, you like that, don't you? Oh yeah. Just gotta be important not for there to be any rust in here. That's the last thing you want. Dirt, rust, anything like that. And the problem that I had with my old, my original king bearing is that these two bearings on the other end had seized to the axle and that was causing some issues. Um, but like I said, she's looking pretty good overall. So I'm just going to reassemble things. Let's pull this off. Make sure things are nice and clean. You can see there is some wear on here from the uh, the king bearings, right, as it goes in. But so these things are all but unobtainium. Ooh, there's a little bit of corrosion there too. Yeah, just have to roll with it. And the key thing we're trying to do here, we just don't want anything to seize to each other, so. Like so. Oh, you know what I forgot? Get your little washer.
Okay. So now this is the tricky part. Tricky ish. something simply because I had such a hard time getting it off we're gonna cheat a little bit that might actually save me some time okay that's back on now comes the arduous task of tightening this thing. All right, so we've got the chain slack where I like it. Good enough, just enough play. Um, next thing we're gonna do is tighten this guy down. Remember with our beveled washer in the correct pattern. Um, I think the manual says they want you to put just a smidge of grease on here. Aid and next time you take it off, which makes sense to me. Put that on there. Uh, figure out. All right, found it. It was still on the driver impact wrench. Now this the manual says this guy goes to 110 foot-pounds, so we'll get that thing set up. Yes, I know I need a better torque wrench, but this gets me close enough. Alright, that's about 110. I am not a fan of putting things in gear to tighten it up, so we'll just hit the brake. A little awkward, but it works. Mostly. Look at this. One ten. these little buggers back on. Okay, all right, now, you tighten these guys down. The manual says about 25.8, I think, foot-pounds, 26 foot-pounds, not a whole lot. trick with this is to do it in increments you don't want to fully torque down one side before you do the other so as you start to feel resistance that's when I go to the other one yep. Now we gotta just swap out the tire and replace the wheel. Alright, let's go. <laughs> 